Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the ABCs to taking control of your money. Kirby, if you can start us off with what the A would be. All right. So before we get into the ABCs, I will talk about how this came up. Um, I remember we posted a video about talking about how to start a mutual fund. I mean, not a mutual fund, excuse me. Talking about people need to have an emergency fund. People need to start investing. And then one of the comments in the comment section, he said, if somebody's living paycheck to paycheck, how can they start putting money away for an emergency fund or let alone invest? And then today, that's why we come with the subsequent video of the ABCs of how to control your money. So first one up is A. A is find alternatives. You know, find alternatives to the life that you're living. And what I mean by finding alternatives is, of course, you still have to pay rent. You still have to pay utilities. You still have to buy food. But the key element of it is find alternatives to how you're allocating that money or what you're going to buy. So if you're at the grocery store and you're spending $400, you know, buying the high end store package brand stuff, then find an alternative maybe to go buy store the store brand. You know, instead of buying 12 steaks, you cut it down to six steaks, you know, instead of, you know, ha having your AC on 65 here in Florida, if you got your AC on 65, you know, cut it on audio and put it to 75 to, you know, to lower the cost of different things. But Alex, what you got about it? Yeah, that's exactly how it needs to be. One of the alternatives that I found, for example, for me that likes to drink coffee was make coffee at home. Coffee was a big expense for me. Um, and it was something that it's so easy to just buy that you're not really thinking about how all those couple dollars add up per day. Finding alternatives in in that sense at home as well, like you said, you know, the AC thing is a big one. When I still hear about people with the AC at 68, I know they got money. I know they got all the money. And <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, we keep our AC at 76. Um, and it's finding alternatives in every way. I think society is kind of programmed to be set with a certain way of living life. You know, every household is different, but they all have similarities in the sense of they do something the same way society tells you how to do it. Find alternatives to it, you know, just think of what is actually a luxury and think of what's a necessity in that way. Right. Yeah. And I hear people saying that when I talk about the AC and all that, they were like, oh, no, I have to be comfortable. No, you want to be comfortable. But you will want but what you want more to comfort is to have that extra money. But let's just say the uh, finding alternative saves you 100 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month. It'll take you, you know, what, 10 months to get to that emergency fund. Just, you know, getting a thousand dollars. Uh, in that emergency fund. So we're, you know, we already make a headway with just the A. But for the people that's wondering, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, how can I do it? Just find alternatives. That's one avenue there. Um, another one is B, Alex. You want to talk about B? Yeah, B is bring entertainment back home. So I we've discussed what I've done before in the past. And by bringing entertainment back home is because entertainment is such a big expense. And I think it's the forgotten expense because it's easy to budget out. OK, I make this much per month. I have this much in rent and gas and light and all that. But people don't account for how much are they actually spending in entertainment because all those fees, all those expenses are hidden in between their bills, after the bills, before their bills. So they're not paying attention and they're not adding it up over the 30 day cycle of a month. And so when you can bring entertainment back home, you can really conserve a lot of that money. And I think entertainment, I would argue, is one of the biggest ones that or if not the biggest one as to why people don't know where their money is going. You know where your money is going as far as rent. You know where your money is going as far as using your vehicle. But when you stop to get lunch, you know, on the way back home or when you stop to get a coffee or a bagel on the way to work or something like that you're not those are entertainment buying buying food that's that you can just prepare at home but you prefer to go out and buy it that's an entertainment expense when you're going to the movies on the weekend when you're meeting up with friends on the weekend all those expenses are for entertainment 
what we did in our household was we realized we liked to go to the movies a lot. It was almost like every weekend and we worked night shift. So like going to the movies after work at night was also accessible to us. So by bringing that back home, what we did was we set up a movie room in our house and we basically we had a free TV that we set up in the room. We got a $50 little TV stand from Walmart and we bought a sofa for like 600 bucks and it was like a reclining movie theater style sofa and we had a bean bag that was free too so we kept that in there you could go to dollar tree something buy a couple snacks get some popcorn and that saved us i think we went over it it was like over like two thousand dollars a year if we went out to the movies every week and something like that that really saved us a lot of money and that's one expense that um we cut back on yeah so just using you just use your metrics and not let's i mean me i'm i'm more hood than alex is uh we i mean forget buying the t forget buying the couch you got a tv uh you know i'm all for going to the dollar store to get snacks but let's you know an average trip to the movie theater and is about a hundred bucks i believe that let's just say you go to movies once a month and then you pick the you know, bringing the entertainment back home method that let's say that's a 20 bucks expense. You know, let's say you go to Red Box and pick up a movie nobody has ever seen. You go to the dollar store, you spend five or 10 bucks and do that. Then just have movie night at the house. So let's just say that saves you 80 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month over 10 months. That's another 800. So now with that number, we have to eighteen hundred dollars uh, in emergency fund savings right there. And then the last one I want to talk about, and this is one that people, I don't know why it's hard for people to do, but it seemed hard for people to do, is cut out all the alternatives. Cut out all the alternatives that doesn't go with the necessities of life. So what I mean by that is, for the life of me, I don't understand why people are core cutting, but they still have the core. So what I mean by that is people still have, you know, the cable services, the internet and all that, but then they also have every subscription service under the sun. Can we stick to one people? Can we just stick to one? I'm not gonna say cut them all out, but let's say you cut out the cable service. That would probably save you about a hundred and some bucks a month. How about cut off, you know, find a streaming service that have most of the shows that you like, and then you cut out all the rest. So now instead of paying 200, 250, 300 bucks a month, just on, streaming services now remember you sleep eight hours a day you work eight hours a day including travel that's 10 that's 10 hours a day that's 18 hours you're only using these streaming services maybe four to six hours a day so find the one that has the most content that you want to watch and just use that one cut out everything else so if we bring that from a 300 dollars payment down to let's say let's say 70 dollars because internet and then the streaming service that's a 230 dollar a month savings 230 dollars a month savings you know we do that over 10 months that's 2300 we add in 800 dollars. that's 3100 that's 3100 dollars. you add in the other thousand bucks from from a finding alternatives then where are we at we have 4100 that's how you get an emergency fund in less than a year that's four thousand so now if you keep that going on after the 10 months now that's for four thousand dollars plus a year you get to invest in a Roth IRA you get to invest in a brokerage account you get to invest more in your 401k however that however that works and then that's how you do it we didn't go to other other things that you could have did was you know get more income and all that but what we was trying to do is say show people you have a set income we're not going to try to tell you to do more as far as to bring your income up but there are ways to cut the way you're living right now to get the money to create an emergency fund, to start investing with the income you make right now. The choice is really up to you what you want to do. So there's no excuse now that people can give and say, oh, I can't do it. I don't have the money. Because I guarantee you, everybody that's watching this channel right now, they have one of those ABCs that they can trim off to create money to build an emergency fund and invest later on in life. On top of that, cutting out unnecessary expenses I'm going to attack P Kirby's people, the foodie people. Okay, so 
I think you can go out to eat <laughs> when you've got the money to go out to eat. But in my experience, I I've seen going out to eat being the biggest expense for people. I've seen people spend six to twelve hundred dollars a month on going out to eat. And they do not really <laughs> yeah, Kirby. <laughs> and Kirby's a bad influence. He just says go out to eat. But honestly, if you are broke, you do not need to be going out to eat. And that can save you so much money by taking going out to eat and cooking at home. That's another thing that we did that would fall into that B category because going out to eat is entertainment. And us bringing cooking at home saved us. Let's say it was, you know, let's say it would be $1,200 a month. That saved us roughly $900 a month. And saving $900 a month the amount you can do with that as far as saving, as far as investing, as far as paying off debt what is extraordinary. And what we did was not just say, OK, we're just going to cook regular meals at home. We knew what we like to eat out. So we looked that stuff up. There's so much content on how to make certain recipes on, OK, how to make a po' boy, how to make, you know, a bur like a burger from in and out Like there's so many different ways to like so many different recipes and videos on that stuff online on youtube and you can learn how to cook the stuff that you like to eat out at home and just do it at home until you have the money to go out and enjoy it that way now, alex i got a confession to make now you know i don't live a lavish lifestyle the only reason why i did the abcs and the sacrifice was so i can go out and eat so yeah i so, saw <laughs> i mean i love going out to eat i'm not gonna lie to you and I knew that I wasn't going to go buy mansions in the hills and stuff like that. I mean, no matter how much money I have, I will never do that because I'm just a very pragmatic person. But I made all those sacrifices, even sitting at home eating. And I did it for a while. And this is not stuff for people that's watching. This is not stuff you have to do forever. But I was the guy that was unscrewing the light bulbs. I, I was the guy that was, you know, setting the AC up high in hot ass Texas just to uh, lower the utility bill. I was a guy that we didn't have much streaming services, but we had the bare minimum on cable. But I used to be an NFL package. I used to have all of all of the the packages that you know Directv had. We cut it down to the bare minimum. Well, we didn't. I mean, we cut it down so low. We just had basic cable. Um, and I had to sit at home and eat. You know, I was sitting at home like, oh man, I was having to learn how to cook. All the other stuff, but that gave me the money to build out my emergency fund. That gave me the money to pay off the extra debt that I had so I can eliminate all the consumer debt. It gave me the money to start investing. And all that money I saved, I just kept investing. And then, you know, over time, my income uh, rose over time. And then that money gave me more ammo to keep investing. And then once I got to a place where I didn't have to put every single penny of my life into investing in emergency funds and things like that, then I was like... I'm going back to the restaurant. And then that's, that is uh, what I did. But again, so I'm proof to the pudding. You don't have to sit there and live like what Alex is talking about forever, but you do have to make that sacrifice for a little while to get to a place where the money you spending on entertainment and going out and all that is not a big hindrance on your life. But the food is good. So I love food. <laughs> well, I mean, said guys, if you have any comments or questions, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, like the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.